Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple login using Python. Now, the thing that we need to do with this is that we need to make sure that it remembers the usernames and passwords. So if we were to store them in a variable, for example, or an array or list, as soon as you close the program, it's going to forget them. So we need it to go into long-term memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to store it in a file. So we'll create a text file. Um, I'm just going to create one here. And I'm just going to call it users. And in here we're going to have our users, and um, so I'm going to call, I'm just going to for argument say the user1 and password1, and user2, password2. I'm going to press enter at the end, and you'll see why later on. So we've got our usernames and passwords, so we want to be able to log in using user1, password, user2, password2, and anything else should be rejected. So. When you log in, the first thing you need to do is you need to ask someone to enter their username and password. So I'm going to do username equals input enter your username. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the password. Password equals input enter your password. Okay, so we're going to take their username in, we'll take their password in. Next, what we need to do is we need to check to see if it's in that, if they're in that text file, don't we? So we need to check for the usernames. So what we're going to do is we are going to open the text file. So I'm going to say text file equals, and I'm going to say open, and we're going to open users.txt, and we're going to do it in read mode. Whenever you open something, you also have to close it. That will come at the end. So I'm just going to put a bit of a space there. So I'm going to do text file dot close. Then once I've done that, I'm now going to I've opened it. I need to read the contents in. So I'm going to use read lines to read it in. So I'm going to say users. Oops, sorry, users equals text file. And I'm going to say dot read lines, and what that will do is it will read it all into an array, and then at the end I've closed it. So now I've got a variable called users, which has all of the usernames. So there's only two. Now, on here, what I've done is I've combined them so they're all on one line. So actually, the reason I've done that is because all I need to do now is concatenate the username the users put in, the password that the users put in, and just check it against each line. Um, I'll demonstrate it and you'll see. So what I'm gonna say is, so we've opened it, now we need to search. So I'm gonna just say search equals, and I'm gonna say it's gonna be username. And I'm gonna say added on, we've got the comma. And then added on to the end of that, I'm gonna add the password. And you remember at the end I said we were gonna add a new line. So I'm going to just put a new line, add a new line onto the end. And this will make a bit more sense later on, but I'm just going to add that. So we've got username, a comma, password, and a new line. So let's just check that. We've got the username, comma, password, and a new line. And all we want to say is if search is in users, and let's say we're going to just print logged in. Otherwise, we'll say fail or incorrect details. Okay, so let's give this a go then. Let's run it. And it's saying enter your username. Let's do user. Was it user or username one? It was user one. And password one. So user one's the username, and the password is password one. I could do some spaces there, which I'll add in later. Perfect, so let's log that in. Um, let's see what it does with an invalid user. So I'm just gonna do user this time, and just password. Perfect, I'm not in. Let's try user two, user two, password two. Excellent, now let's try a valid username, but an invalid password. So user one and a random password. Excellent, okay, so that's working. 
that's really good. So now let's say, for example, we get it wrong. We might want to set, give them another try. So what we can do to do that is we can just turn this into a sub program and use recursion so that it calls itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to define it, def log in. And I'm going to just put this all into a sub program. There we go. And I'm going to say when it says incorrect username or password, I'll say try again. And then I'm going to call itself. Okay, let's give this a go. So what it should do, or I have to call it, don't I, from the main body. So I've got enter username, I'm going to put an invalid one in, invalid password. There we go, and it's just going to keep letting me, there we go, it keeps asking over and over, perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we've managed to get it to log in. Um, we've managed to get it to save them in a text file, but maybe if you're playing a game or something, you might want it to refer to you later on. At the end of the game, you might want to say, user one has won or something like that. So what we, we can do is we can get it to, once we've logged in, we can get it to return the username. So what I'm going to say is, because I want to know who it is that's logged in, and I'm going to store this in a variable. So what I'll do is I'm going to say return username so the username that's been entered that's been successful I'm going to return it and what this will do is now is we can say player one equals login and hopefully if it works we can also do the same for player two and what should happen is the username should be returned into those variables so let's at the end let's print player one to just see if it's in there okay so let's give this a go uh, let's get rid of player two because we don't need to see that right now. So username is going to be user one, password one. And what we're looking for is at the end, it's going to print player one. Logged in, sorry, user one, not player one. Perfect. So that's what it's done is it's taken the username I've entered here and it's now storing it in this variable called player one. So when I log in, I could say player one and it goes through the login um, procedure and then it's going to save whatever valid username is entered into here and then I would do the exact same line again for player 2 good okay so what we've done is we've managed to make a successful login system now here are users maybe for example we want to add a new user okay well yes we can always write them into the text bar like so but it doesn't really work like that does it so maybe you want to have a system where the user can register, for example, okay? So what we can do is, I'm just going to get rid of this bit now. I'm going to create a new, pro, um, new sub-program called register. Okay, and this is going to work really similarly. All we're doing is we're going to add to the end of the text file. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask them for the username and password, like so, like we've already done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open our text files again, the one with the, all the usernames and passwords. However, this time, we don't want to open it in read mode. We want to add to the end of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it in append mode. So we're going to use A. And we're not going to read lines because we're not going to read it in. So we're going to just open it and we're going to close it later on. We'll close that when we're finished adding to it. So what we're going to now do is we're going to concatenate them together, the username and the password, so that it's in the same format as we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do new user equals and I'm going to say um, username plus the password, plus a comma, sorry, plus the password. Now, what I'll do is I'll show you why it is that we added the new line on. I'm gonna leave it off for now, but you're gonna see what the error was and why we had to add the new line. And then once we've done that, we can close the text file. That's perfect. So now let's call the register function. So all we wanna do is we wanna be able to add to that text file. So I'm going to call it new user and new password.
password. And what should happen is this should be in our text file. No, it's not gone in there. Why is it not in there? Um, so we've got text file, users.txt a. Oh, we haven't written it, have we? So what I'm gonna say is, is where on line 25, I've concatenated them together. Now I need to write it to the text file. So I'm gonna say text file dot write, and I'm gonna write in there the new user details. Okay, let's give this another go. New user, new password. Okay, let's have a look. There we go, we can see it's added them. So let's now add a second new user. Second user. Second password. Let's check. Right, can you see it's put them on the same line? So the problem here is what we sh should have done is once we wrote our new user, we should have also written a new line so that it goes down one. That's why we added it in earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just change it on here where I write my new user, or actually I'm gonna add it onto here, where it says new user, I'm just gonna add on a new line. Okay, let's give this, okay. I'm gonna call this one new line and put the password as new. I think actually it's still gonna make the same mistakes. I didn't put a new, let me put the new line in there. There we go. Let's give it another go. And call it line and test. There we go, see how it's put it on a new line and it's also put in a new line for the future ones. So what we've got here is we've got two functions. We've got login and register. When you start your program, you could say something like, would you like to log in or register? Um, and the user could choose. And what it could be even once they've registered, you could always say, once they've done all of that successfully, you could say, please log in. So we could call the login feature, you could say, Please, oops, print, please log in. There we go. 